three flips and a, and, and a twist. Just watch the signs of God in your life. And when you see God leading you in a certain direction, move your fear, take some courage, and go for it. And know that he that hath begun a good work in you, he's able. Sit, 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 sit. If you wait for somebody to tell you it's going to be good for you, you got a long way. Because people will know that it's good for you, but jealousy and all this other stuff will let people sit on your gift. You better look at your own anointing, discern the own time in your life, see that God is opening up some doors for you, and honey, go for it. Go, go, go. Slap three people of five and say, go for it, go, go. Do something for yourself. Wait for nobody to validate you. Wait for nobody to affirm you. You better get in the mirror and say, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going for this right here. And there ain't a devil in hell that can stop me. If God be for me, who can? I need somebody to praise him because I feel some doors opening right here. Sit, sit. You've been waiting for somebody to start a prayer group on your job. Start it yourself. Start the prayer group. Get the little assistant. Get your assistant. Get the little page. Get the, come on, we're going to pray. And stand right by the coffee machine and go to pray. If they tell you you can't pray, say that's discrimination. Pray at that coffee machine till they give you a room. You don't want me praying at the coffee machine, you better give me one of these rooms. Bear fruit! Sit, sit, sit. That's the first principle. <laughs> You're barren. You're fruitless. You're dry. You're dead. You're in somebody's way. My, my last one right here, I'm going to point two in a minute. My last one. Because if you're not careful, he going to raise up somebody out there that's going to outshine you. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he, got, he got some folk out there. He ain't saved yet. So we, we, we begging you to sing on the choir. Please sing, sing, please. Okay. He got some girls in a club. And when he saved them, they're going to make your alto sound stupid. Stupid. And don't make me qualify it either because I can prove it in the Bible. I can prove it. I can prove it. He told another parable. He said there was another man had another vineyard. He wanted some laborers. So he went out in the marketplace. Said, come work for me. Somebody came in the morning. Somebody came in the afternoon. Somebody, it's, the, it's in Matthew. Somebody came about 6.05. Closed up the shop at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Started to pay everybody. He gave everybody the same pay. It's in the book. Folk had been there working all day, got mad. Said, what you mean? You are an unfair employee, employer. You gave them the same amount of money that you gave me, and we've been working here all day. The boss said, shut up, it's my vineyard. You agreed to work for me for whatever I thought was right to pay you. Them jokers that came in at 605 worked twice as hard as you have. You've been here all day. Y'all don't want to hear me talk. Some of you been sitting in church for 20 years. You ain't got nothing done. You're still barren. You're still dry. You're still fruitless. God going to bring somebody in here tomorrow that's going to outwork you. I can't get you to believe it. 
Don't think that God is ever in a jam where he got to have you. I'm going to take me a love offering today. I'm going to take a love offering for me. Sit, sit. A vineyard owner. <laughs> Came to his vineyard. There was a fig tree that was barren. He says to the caretaker, to the dresser, I've been watching this fig tree for two, three years. Three years, he says. It's still barren. Cut it down. It's not bearing any fruit. Second principle. Well, the, the vineyard owner was making implication that the fig tree was worthless. <laughs> That, that, that it was dead and dry and worthless. That in spite of the fact that it, it, it had been there three years, it, 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 it was worthless. It, 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 it wasn't producing. It, 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 it was just taking up space. Lord have mercy. Uh, but, but, but what I've come to know about Jesus he will leave you in a dry place long enough for that dry, dead place to develop you. Lord have mercy. I, I can't get no honest folk in here. But if you tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, your growth in the Lord didn't come with a happy experience. Posse at, where my real folk? I said, if you tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth, you started growing in the Lord because of some tests, because of some trial, because of some tribulation, because of some persecution that you couldn't do a thing about. And because the Lord knew that if he let that stay there long enough, there's another character that would be developed. Oh, come on here. you had to go through that bad relationship so God could teach you how to be nice to everybody. That's why they lied on you and talked about you so you learn how to shut your mouth and don't be so quick to judge. That's why he had to strip you of your fine clothes and let you go down to wear one suit. That's why you have to take the bus instead of driving a BMW because he's working on your character, honey. When you get through with this one, you're going to be right with God and with your fellow man. I can't get you to believe it. Slap your neighbor five and tell him God will break you. And then he'll make you over again. Oh, Lord. Sit, 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 sit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You do all the praying and fasting you want. But if God has planted that thing there to help you to be better, it ain't going to move until God gets ready for it to move. I said you can pray fast 40 days and 40 nights, get all the prophets to lay hands on you, but if God has put that thing in your life because he's trying to make something out of you, it ain't moving nowhere till you get where God wants you to be.